my ears, my eyes, my heart, and my mind to hear, see, understand, and perceive what the Holy Spirit is speaking to my heart through God's word in Jesus. Let's give him praise for the word of God today, man. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everything all good back there? CD and everything? Everything's working? Okay, praise God. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Amen. And God has put on my heart, um, well, I, I started out first, and I'll tell you what we're going to be doing today. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, look at verse, verse 9. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus said, after this manner, pray you, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed what be your name. Your kingdom come, your what will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, right? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for what? Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. How long? Forever. Amen. Go down to verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? After all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. But what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will, will be added unto you. Now, the title of my message tonight, today is the kingdom, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come, part three. Now, what happened, now, I'm going to give you a little, if you, how many were here last week? Okay. Um, what happened last week, we, I gave this message here. It's a, it's a three-part series. And it's very important. This part comes out. It didn't get recorded uh, in the, um, you know, on the online or, or the uh, CD. So I'm going to get it, get it again. But uh, how many know you can hear something the first time and, and you get something better the second time? Yeah. Amen. And I plus God gave me a few more things to go along with this. Amen. So we're talking about what? The kingdom of God. Amen. It's the last part in the series. Amen. And, and we said the kingdom of God, it's, it's um, the laws and the principles by which God's kingdom operate. It's, the, it's, the, um, it's an invisible realm. You can't see with your natural eyes, but it's real. Him and the kingdom of God is real, amen? And you can't see with, but there are laws that govern it. There's power and there's glory, and it affects the natural realm every area of your life, amen? And how many born again people, how many believe in Jesus Christ in this place here? How many receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, the Bible says, not only did, did you get Christ on the inside of you, but you received the kingdom, Amen? that came on, on the inside of you, that cannot be, uh, uh, be shaken, amen? So we want to talk about now you enter into the kingdom and what God wants you, the prayer here was that you pray, the prayer was that what you pray what thy kingdom come, amen? God wants his kingdom to what? To manifest in our lives on the earth, amen? So I'm going to kind of go over some things we talked about um, last week, amen? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, um, the kingdom of God, there, there is, there's great power with God's kingdom. Amen. If you read in Mark chapter 9, the Bible said the kingdom of God, Jesus said the kingdom of God comes with great power. Amen. Not just word only, but in also, somebody say power. Amen. So once you understand, there's great power with the kingdom of God. Amen. And there are laws that govern the kingdom of God. And the word for power, Greek word is, is dunamis. It means miracle working. Wonder working power, might, strength, and ability. How many want some miracle working power operating in your life? Wonder working power, some strength in, in your life, and the divine ability beyond your ability. So God said there's, with this kingdom, there's some miracle working strength and ability that you can't get in your own, amen? So you have access to the power of God, amen? Psalm 66, 7 says, God rules by his what? By his power forever, amen? I got the power. I had a song like that one time, Amen? Hallelujah. Now, Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is what? Not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, what? Peace and joy where? In the Holy Spirit. So if you got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, guess what else is on the inside of you? The kingdom of God is also dwells on the inside of you. Amen? Because the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit comes the kingdom of God. Amen? So you got more than you realize. That's why the Bible says greater is he that's what in you than what? Than he that's in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, amen. He's a, he's a, uh, the tri God, I'm the gods of three, he's one God, but he's three dimensionals like we are, spirit, soul, and body. So the Holy Spirit, 
aspect of, of the Trinity, amen, and he dwells, God himself dwells on the inside of you, amen? Isn't that, isn't that awesome, y'all? And when God, he's the king of all kings, and when he comes in, guess what? The king brings his kingdom with him. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Glory to God. He wants you, but he wants you to learn, and he tells all of us to learn how to operate in the kingdom. That's what we're talking about now, because you have something in you more than you realize, amen? And if you don't learn about what you have and how to operate it, because Jesus said, the works that I do, what? You shall do how? Also, what else? Greater works than these, so you do, because I go to the Father. And somebody said, I can't, I'm not Jesus Christ. I can't do the works of Jesus Christ. Well, you think he's lying? <laughs> no. Well, how can I do the works? We said, the works I do, he said, I can do nothing of myself. He said, it's the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of me, what? He's doing the works. Since I'm going to go to the Father, I'm going to pay the price for our, our sins, and when I come back, I'm going to send the Holy, uh, when, uh, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit back, and he's going to dwell on the inside of you. So the same works that I did under the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to do the exact same works. Isn't that awesome, y'all? How many do the works of the Lord? <clears throat> Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So the kingdom of God is not me to drink, but it's what? It's righteousness. It's what? It's peace, and it's joy, in the Holy Spirit. Amen? So the kingdom of God is governed by the word of God, but it is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? The kingdom of God is governed by the word of God, but it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's why I said thine is the kingdom. What? Thine is the power and thine is the glory. Amen? So it's governed by the word. That's the laws of the kingdom. And it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we, God said we're to worship him how? In spirit and in truth. Amen? So there's the laws we talked about, so in the word, in you, but now, but we also need power in this last day. How many know there's demonic power? Amen? The demons are real. I mean, you see it manifesting, in, you see the earth right now, it's more than, this crazy stuff we're seeing is more than just human sin. It's demonic power that's influencing, amen? So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing an invisible realm, evil realm manifesting itself in the natural realm in ways we've never seen before. We know there's something that's evil behind this thing. Amen? But there's also a real kingdom of goodness of God that wants to manifest himself also in this realm. And we're the ones that are in the kingdom, and God wants to work through you and me to manifest his kingdom on earth so his will can get done on earth as what? As it's done in heaven. So we're the ones that God wants. It's in us, but God wants to manifest it through us. Amen? So we're going to talk about, you know what I mean, not just the laws, but also the power and the glory of the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 28 said, we receive the kingdom that cannot be moved. In other words, the Bible says it's coming to a time, and we're seeing it right now where everything's being shaken. The earth is being shaken. Nations are being, people are shaken with fear. Stuff is happening. Everything's being shaken right now. And it says it's being shaken so that the things that cannot be moved, cannot be shaken, will, will remain. It said we receive the kingdom that cannot be moved or shaken. So if you operate in the kingdom of God, I don't care how bad it looks, how bad it gets in society, how bad it looks all around you, God says if you, if you are knowing how to operate, that you will still be standing no matter how bad things are because we receive a kingdom that cannot be moved, cannot be shaken. Amen? The devil can do all he want, huff and puff, try to blow your house down, but it ain't going to happen. Amen? And that's that what Jesus said? You build on the foundation of Christ. Amen? So it's, we're talking about this. So you have more on the inside than we realize. Amen? And God wants you to learn of, you, of him and what you have on the inside. Amen? Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ is called the king of who? Who's the kings he's talking about? He made us kings and priests. And any king, any king has a domain to, to rule. So God says, Jesus, I want you to rule with me. So he's the king and he's given us the kingdom to rule with him. Amen? It's a domain influence wherever you go. He wants to bring the influence of the kingdom, the laws and the power, amen, the glory of the kingdom through you and me. This is what we're talking about. Amen? Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen? Now, here, uh, the Bible says, Romans 5, 17, says this, uh, they which receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life as kings by one Jesus Christ. How many receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness? So God said, now you're supposed to reign in this life as a king through Jesus Christ in his kingdom. Amen? Not to be defeated. We got to realize we, we, brought, we were brought out of darkness. We're no longer in darkness. We're not under that dark kingdom anymore. Amen? You're born again. You got a brand new kingdom. And God said, now you, we, sometimes we can live far below in which world we still be living because we, don't like, we lack our understanding of what happened when we got born again. Amen? Hallelujah. So if we're going to rule and reign with Christ, amen, this kingdom, amen, we're going to learn how to operate in that power. Amen? How to operate. How does the kingdom operate on the earth, God? You see, your kingdom come, your will be done. How do we operate the kingdom? Well, Christ was the, was the um, example of how the kingdom operates. Read the Gospels. He did it. 
said, he's, though he was God, he laid aside his power and became like the seed of Abraham, did it as a man, dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he said, all the things he did, the, uh, casting out the devils, healing the sick, performing miracles, he said, when you see these things, know that the kingdom of God has come to the earth when it's manifesting. And I said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to let the kingdom come in you and I want you to do the exact same things that I did. I want you to manifest my kingdom, amen, to the people on the earth. They can see the kingdom of God is real and it's coming into manifestation. That's our job as, as Christians now. That's our main purpose now that you're born again. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Somebody say he's good, amen. I mean, want to manifest the kingdom of God in your life like never before. Amen. This is what God called us to do. Life is short, y'all. I said, life is short. People leaving out here in teens, 20s, 30s, amen, and you don't want to waste your time on the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. So the same works I do, what? He said, you shall what? Do also in greater works. That Christ, Christ was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. Went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for what God was with him. So let's, let's I want you to kind of turn to 1 Corinthians. I want to go over some things here because... Since you have the Holy Spirit in you, don't you want to know how the, how the Holy Spirit operates? Because we have to flow with him. Amen? So uh, I'm going to talk about today since the, the power of the kingdom, how the Holy Spirit manifests himself. And you'll see as we go over this, you'll see how he manifested through Christ. He wants to manifest himself the same exact way in you and me. Amen? And that's what he's talking about. So I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he? Glory to God. First Corinthians, and we're going to look, talk up, look up how the Holy Spirit, he manifests himself. So when you begin to, so when you understand how he operates, I believe sometimes he's trying to operate through you and me, and we, didn't, we thought it was the, our flesh or the devil, and we're rebuking the Holy Spirit. We didn't know how he was operating. Are you with me now? So I'm, I'm going to talk about this, how he manifests. So when he begins to manifest and try to work in you or through you, he's like, okay, that's the Holy Spirit. Let me flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing in my life right now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. First Corinthians, look at chapter, chapter 12. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1. Hallelujah. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you what? Ignorant. I know that you were Gentiles, carried away with these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus Christ accursed, Amen? And no man can say that Jesus Christ is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts but the same Holy Spirit. Differences of ministration but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation but it is the same God which works it all in all. Isn't that something, y'all? So we see here what? There are diversities of, diversities of gifts in the kingdom of God. Everybody has different gifts, y'all. Every one of us has different gifts that God, yet God wants you to represent him, but we all represent with different types of gifts. But everybody's not the same, amen? So you, you find yourself, you have an inclination to do this in the, in the world, amen? That's God put that gift in you to, uh, to you show the kingdom in that lift of your gifting. So the diversity of gifts, we all have different gifts, amen? There are diverse differences of administrations and a diversity of operations in the kingdom of God, amen? Glory to God. God is good, amen? Now, um, verse, verse 7 says what? But the manifestation... Of the Spirit is given to what? Every man to profit with, not to fail with. So God said, the, as the Holy Spirit begins to manifest himself, is given to you and me to what? To profit with. He wants you to prosper life. Amen? This making sense, everybody? I know we went over last week, but it's, I mean, it's just good to go back over it again. Amen? Amen? Go back over this here. So you have the, the power of the Holy Ghost is in you, and it's there to, to profit you with. Amen? So we're going to talk about the different manifestations of the Holy Spirit today. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. Let's start with verse 8. Hallelujah. For to one is given the spirit of what? By the spirit, the word of what? Somebody say word of wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. How many like to have the word of wisdom operate in your life? Well, what is the word of wisdom? Let me give you a definition of wisdom first. Wisdom is the ability to make right decisions even in the face of confusing very complicated situations. I'll say it again. Wisdom is the ability to, to make right decisions, even in the face of confusing, very complicated situations. Isn't that something, y'all? How many would like to have, how many got some, some, uh, some confusing situations in your life right now? Huh? How many, how many need some? 
to make the right decision in those areas of your life right now? Well, that's what the Holy Spirit on the inside of you wants to do in your life. Amen? He wants to give you, but the word of wisdom is a specific word from the Holy Spirit to help make a right decision in a particular situation. It makes sense, everybody, y'all? It's a specific word. Amen? To make the right decision in a specific situation. So that's what the Holy Ghost does. He wants to, in your times, he wants to give you a word of wisdom. Amen? He doesn't want you to be confused. So if everybody is confused, he wants to give you the wisdom to overcome. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. Somebody said, Lord is good. Amen. Let me give an example of this here. Jesus Christ. Remember, remember the Bible says, I, I shared it last week here, but it says that, remember the, uh, the Pharisees, the wouldn't and the couldn't I call them? Amen. And they tried to trap Jesus in, uh, in his words. And they said, Lord, there was this woman who was caught in adultery. Remember this, Lord? And they, something the man never, they never brought the man there, but they set her up, right? And said, but the law says she should what? She should be stoned. And he said, what do you say, Jesus? They're trying to trap him in his words. People do that, people will do that in your life. They don't like you. They'll try to set you up. People will try to, they don't like you. Even in, you know, in your job situation, people don't like you. They'll try to set you up, get you off your job. Amen? Making sense? Amen? So you're going to need some wisdom because everybody that, everybody don't, that smile in your face and say they're going to take your place don't have your best interests in mind. So you need, you need to know, have wisdom how to discern even with people. That's what Solomon said, Lord, I need, I need wisdom to deal with these people here. Amen? How many know you dealing with people? You need wisdom, right? Amen? So that's what happens. So Christ's like, okay, he got down, remember he knelt down, and he began to write on in the, in the sand with his hands, with his fingers. Remember the story? And what happened? Why was he kneeling down? You know, he, what he was doing, he was waiting for a word of wisdom from the Holy Spirit to give to these people. They were trying to entrap him. You know, and what was the word of wisdom? Remember the word of wisdom? He said, he that is what? Without sin, let him what? Cast the first stone. Isn't that something? And that was, that, that, that was so full of packed with wisdom. They all had stone. They all dropped their stones. Had big rocks, amen? From the least to the small, and they took off because what? God gave them a word of wisdom for that specific moment. Amen. It was so powerful that nobody couldn't, they couldn't go past that wisdom. How do God can stop the mouth of your enemies with one word of wisdom, amen? They can stop their plans, amen, that against your life with one word of wisdom. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life and my life, amen? And he wants to manifest himself. This is how we prosper. This is how the kingdom gets manifested because the wisdom is the principal thing in life, Amen. Hallelujah. Daniel was 10 times wiser than, than the wisest people in his time. Amen. And God wants to give that wisdom. Amen. That's how he wants to manifest himself in your life through the kingdom of God. Amen. I mean, with that word of wisdom in your life. Amen. Well, God wants to operate in your life with the word of wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at, um, uh, we're still in, was it, verse 8? One to one to give by the uh, spirit, the word of wisdom, to another what? The word of knowledge by the same spirit. Well, Hallelujah. How I many want knowledge, the word of knowledge in your life? Amen. How I many know God knows all things? Amen. How many have been confused about things in your life? I need, man, if I just had the knowledge of this thing here, I can make it. I can prosper, but I just don't have the knowledge of that thing. But how I many know God can give you the knowledge? Uh, matter of fact, the Bible says the Holy Spirit can give you knowledge of witty inventions. And there have been people that all of a sudden they, they prayed about things and all of a sudden knowledge came and, and they had an invention. And they said, how did you know that? God gave it to them in a dream. God gave him knowledge. Amen? So God's like, I know all things. And that's one thing about the Holy Spirit. What you might be lacking, amen, he can give you knowledge to give you the edge in life. Amen? Hallelujah. So, but a word of knowledge is, is a specific word given to a person by the Holy Spirit about a certain person, place, or thing that cannot be known by human, human means. Amen? So in other words, God can give you a word, and, and this works best especially when you're trying to help people. In life, or you're trying to bring them to Christ, amen? And what happens, and, and you're like, man, because they won't, I don't believe in that Jesus stuff. But all of a sudden, you get a word about something in their life that took place, you know, uh, that they're going through. And they say, how did you know that? There's no way you could have known that. Well, the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit told me that. And it's like, whoa, God is real. See, this is what God wants us to learn to operate in these things. The Holy Spirit, this is what operated through Christ. If you see an example, how many want to see an example of that in Christ's life? Well, the story of the word of knowledge I gave it last week was the woman at the woman at the well. Remember the Samaritan woman, and the Jews didn't have no dealing with them. But he came and says, and he said, he I must go. And he wants to, Christ loves everybody, y'all. Wants to win everybody, amen. And he went to the woman and he said, uh, "Give me to drink." And she said, um, 
He said, uh, you know, um, why is it you're a Jew? Y'all don't have dealings with us. He said, if you knew who I was, you would ask of me what, and I would give you what? Living water. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Somebody said living water. Amen? I will give you living water. And he said, he said well, Lord, you, can, you don't have nothing to, to draw it out with. He said, listen, he said, go get your husband. Remember the story? And she said, uh, I don't have any husband. He said, you're right. You had, you've had five husbands. And the one you have right now is not your husband. You probably got somebody else. <laughs> Amen? And he said, Lord, I perceive you're a prophet. What happened? And she realized and when they opened her eyes up to receive that he's the Messiah. And she got saved by what? There's no way that he could have known that except by the Holy Spirit revealing knowledge that nobody else could know. The Holy Spirit knows all things. So God said that word, he wants to help you in your life even as you're helping other people, even in your own personal life. You might need a word of knowledge that you can't get from anybody else and all of a sudden download come in your spirit. Amen? Word of knowledge by the same spirit. I'm talking about how the Holy Spirit manifests himself. Amen? Glory to God. Isn't God good? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This up with y'all today? My, my, my. Going back over it again. Amen. I, I, I got get this in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 9. To another, faith by the same spirit. Amen. I mean, when faith in this, this is a different type of kind of faith. It's called special faith in other parts. It's this, this is um, when God's faith comes upon our faith at a certain po- a moment to accomplish a specific supernatural feat. In other words, it's not just regular faith. This is when God joins his faith to your faith. I mean, that's when mountains start moving in your life. Amen? That's when God, when you come to the end of yourself, it's like, man, God supernaturally adds his faith to your faith. And you find yourself believing for stuff you never could believe in your own power, your own strength. That's, that's what the Holy Spirit comes. He's our helper. Amen? So you might be in a dangerous situation. You need, you need, you need some faith for a certain situation. It's not there. And you have some faith, but the Holy Ghost, will, in his mercy, will add the faith of God. And you can believe for stuff you never thought you can believe for. And mountains begin to move in your life. Amen? This is what he's talking about. Amen? And this special faith here, you'll see, uh, you will operate more in, in the Bible. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 10. He told the disciples, go forth, heal the sick. Raise the dead. I can't raise the dead. No, you can't. I can't either. But as he told us to do it, didn't he? Amen. Well, that you. This is where this special faith comes in. It comes in when people raise the dead. I mean, Christ raised the dead. People in the Old Testament raised the dead. Peter raised the dead. But that that was that special gift of faith coming on you. There was a guy named Smith Wigglesworth back in the 1920s and 30s. Amen. And he caught. He was. He raised like 18 people from the dead in his ministry. It's, it's documented. Amen. And, and he would say, you know, I gave the story last week, he went to a funeral, <laughs> this person was dead, amen, and, and, and bombed and everything. He went to a funeral home and picked him out the casket, put him against the, the wall, said, said stay, move, be, uh, live. And he kept falling back down, lifted back up, live, and finally came back to life, walked out with the body. Amen? That was very extreme, amen? But he would say, um, I, I would get to the end of my faith in praying for the dead, somebody, and all of a sudden, at my weakness, my extremity, I felt a, a faith would come on me and all of a sudden I can believe for anything. And people, would, all kind of miracles would begin to happen. That's the gift of faith. You can't do that in your own strength. Nobody can do that. Nobody has that kind of faith in the natural. This making sense, everybody? Else? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, like that, that, I like the gift of faith in your life. Amen. Move some mountain you can't move in your own strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Then as, uh, we're in verse 9 still. Another one, what gifts of healing by the same spirit. Somebody say gifts of healing. Oh, how many know we need some healing in our life? Amen. Look at the stuff we're dealing with now, the diseases. You got cancers. You got, you know, all the pandemics, pandemics, and they all these diseases coming like we don't know what to do. I don't know God can heal any manner of sickness and disease. I don't care what, what, what kind of disease. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Christ went about healing every manner of sickness and every manner of disease amongst the people. Every manner of sickness in every manner of disease amongst the people. In other words, what? By the Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you and me. Amen? Does this make sense, everybody, y'all? Hallelujah. So the gifts of healings, amen, it's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit power to cure sicknesses and disease. You see it in Jesus' life in the early church. Remember, the woman with the issue of blood came to Jesus Christ, went to the doctors for how long? Twelve long years. Took all these medical treatments, Examine, I mean, and, and you know, nothing God for doctor, but they, they have a certain limit where they can't do anything, amen? 
And they got to the point and said, 12 long years, spent all the money, more insurance. They said, okay, we can't help you anymore. And she was broke. Now she's, now she's sick and broke. Isn't that bad? But she heard about Jesus, y'all. And she heard that he, what, heals the sick. Amen? And so she said, if I can just, what, come on, if I can just touch that hem of his garment, the power that's on his garments, I know I'll be healed. And she went and she went and pressed away and touched his garment. And Christ was walking, didn't even see her. He said, stop, who touched me? Somebody said, everybody's touching us. No, I felt power go out of me. Hallelujah. This up on y'all? Come on. It was the power. That was the healing power that he was anointed with, the Holy Spirit's power. Amen? That he was anointed. That same power is in you and in me. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. Amen? Hallelujah. And Peter did what the man was, was he was at the temple of the gate, a beautiful, 40 years old, never walked a step in his life. And Peter says, so, it says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you. And he grabbed him by the hand, and the power of the Holy Spirit's power, healing power, went into that man's legs. He leaped up and walked for the first time and began to jump. What? Well, because the, he manifested healing power through him. I mean, how many of want, God wants to do the same thing you, through you and me? You shall what? Lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. These signs shall follow them that believe. How many believe in there in Jesus Christ? Why? Because of the kingdom, the power of God's in you. The power of the kingdom is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants to, wants to use you. Somebody say, God wants to use me. He wants to use you. Amen. In me. Amen. Glory to God. Where we, we stopped, the, where's the next one? Glory to God. Verse 10. Glory to God. It's another working of what? Miracles. I mean, like, how many needs some miracles in your life? I mean, how many want God to work a miracle in your life? What's the work in the miracles? A miracle is a divine intervention by God into the natural realm that supersedes natural laws to bring about a specific thing. Amen? How many, how many God to, to work some miracles in your life right now? Well, the Holy Spirit, he's, never, he's not limited according to our abilities, according to your circumstances. Amen? He can come into your situation, amen, and supersede that thing and cause it to come to pass in your life. Don't put limitations on God. Amen? Do not put limitations on God. Amen? Because what? With God, how many things are possible? All things are possible. Amen? Hallelujah. How did, what did Jesus do? He multiplied. Remember, this, I told you the story last week. They were out of bread. They were 5,000 people, or probably about 20,000 inside the men and children, women and children. Hungry, three days, no food. They said, give them to eat. They said, what? We got no food to eat. They said, what do you have? We got what? Five loaves, a few loaves of bread, and two fish. He said, what is that among so many? And what he did, he said, give it to me. He looked up to heaven, not on the earth, to where the kingdom of heaven was. And what happened? And what? Supernaturally, it began to multiply. And it fed over 20,000 people. Isn't that something, y'all? It had 12 baskets left over. What? That's the power of the kingdom of God. Amen? Somebody say, God is good. Amen? And glory to God. Glory to God. Working the miracles. Amen? I got to hit this again this week. Amen? Because <laughs> it was, it was, I had to get that in. Amen? What was the next one? Verse 10. What? The little what? Prophecy. What? By the same spirit. What's prophecy? That's, that's, the Bible says you speak to men to edification, exhortation, and to comfort. Amen? Sometimes you need a word, a specific word in your life. And somebody got to move upon you, upon somebody, give you a word that's specific for you to comfort you when you're going down. And you, that word is that, that, that blessed me. That built me up in life. Amen? That really did a work in my life, amen? It gave me edification and comfort, amen? So God wants to use through, through prophecy as well. Uh, look at the next one is what? Discerning. Another what? Discerning of spirits. What's the discerning of spirits? That's called, that's the Holy Spirit begin to uh, give you discernment about demonic spirits. How many of demons are real? Like I said, they're really real. And I mean, you got to be able to understand that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but what? Against principalities? against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world. Amen? And demons, even though you can't see them, they can, they can get in, your, in people's houses. I have, I have people, they ask me to come to the house because they start seeing shadows walking past them. Amen? And they, and they felt cold chills in the house, and, they, and, they, and all of a sudden fear and things start working crazy because what? Demonic spirits, they're real, y'all. Amen? And what God, when you walk with the Holy Spirit, he'll give you discernment about this is, this, this is the kind of spirit that's operating right here. I want you to call and bind the thing in my name. Amen? And call it out of your situation. He does not want demons to rule your life. Amen? 
They get, in, get inside, get in, in, amongst children. They all come. So God's like, listen, I want you to learn about demonic spirits. The Holy Spirit will teach you, amen, what's even you can, especially people. How many of you have walked to a person and you felt something not wrong right with their spirit? Have you been there before? Like, man, something is not right with that spirit. And they want to try to kind of get with you and all kinds of like, no, nah, something. And the Holy Ghost, like I said, no, something evil. They smile and look all good, everything else, but something is evil about their spirit. Amen? That's called discerning of spirits. God, the Holy Spirit wants to give you discerning of spirits so you can, what, keep you from being trapped in life. Amen? These manifestations are given to us, what, that we may profit and prosper in this life. Amen? That's what, that's the power of the Holy Spirit I'm talking about in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. I feel anointing of God. Glory to God. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. The other one is what? Verse 10. <clears throat> the other one is given what? Diver kinds of tongues. <clears throat> Another what? Interpretation of tongues. Amen? Now, I'm turning to the book of Acts. I'm going to show you something in the book of Acts here. Amen? The Acts chapter 2. Glory to God. I'm going to show you what God is talking about right here. Hallelujah. Somebody had confusion about tongues. What has that tongues been this well? Well, let's, let's go to the word of God. Amen. God, I want you confused. Amen. Acts 2, look at verse 1. We're not going to be long today. Amen. Because God's giving me. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in what? One place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them what? Cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak what with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, devout men, and they heard, they heard, every man heard them speak in their own language. What was going on here? God used the gift of tongues so people that heard them in different languages heard them preach in the same language. That's a gift that God used, amen, to interpret to people to bring them to Christ. Amen. But there's also another gift the Bible talks about in Corinthians that talks about how that you speak in tongues, you speak in, not to men, but unto God. And it's talking about a prayer language, direct to God. Amen? And you be said, you're praying out mysteries. And that's what tongues do. It's, it's not so much, you know, there's the time you can come in the, in the, in the service, you need to have an interpretation, the Bible says. But it's more so your prayer life, your personal prayer life. Amen? Have you been to a point where you know how to pray as you ought to pray? And the Bible says in Romans 8, 26, we don't know how to pray as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. Amen? And you get to a point and you say, I don't know how to pray about this. And all of a sudden he raises up in you and he, with utterance you can't be, can't be uttered with an articulate speech. He begins to pray the will of God through you. This is what, you, this is what the tongues does. Amen? It helps you in your prayer. It's called a heavenly language. Amen? And it helps you when, in your weakness in prayer. That's what the main purpose of tongues should be. Amen? People took it out of context, but it's main so it's a language to help you in, in a language to help you to pray to God, the will of God. The Holy Spirit gives you utterance. We don't know how to pray. And you're praying in a, a language that the Holy Ghost knows, God knows, amen. And he's praying out the will of God for your life, amen. He helps you in your weaknesses, amen. That's why you read in the book of Acts, they all, they, they, they spoke in other tongues, amen. That was cause called the gift. It's a gift of God. Now everybody gets saved. You get the Holy Spirit when you're saved. Are you with me now? He dwells on the inside of you when you're, when you're saved. Holy Spirit does. Amen. But this, this, this tongue is a gift that God has given to help you. You should pray for this here. God, I would like to have that, that in my life. Amen. Because it helps me in my prayer life. Amen. He empowers, it's in more, he empowers you in your weaknesses. Can we see this here, y'all? So this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He's come to what? To help us in what? In our weaknesses. I don't like, I don't like being weak. How about you? You like being weak? <laughs> I want to be strong, amen? He's come to make you strong. So these are, these are gifts we call them, they're called manifestations of the Holy Spirit, amen? If you're in the kingdom of God, God said, all these things, I want to help you to prosper you in your life. You got more, you got to give you the edge in life. I'm going to have the edge in life, amen? Well, the Holy Spirit is there to help you, and this is how he manifests himself in the believer. This is how he manifested through Christ. Christ didn't have the tongue, but that was when that happened in the uh, day of Pentecost, Amen? Because he had no weaknesses in him, amen? But we, need, we have weaknesses, amen? It helps us to pray, amen? And as we get to the point, as it gets worse and worse, as we, as we see the day getting darkness and you can, more confusing, Holy Spirit, I need you to help me to pray. I need your help like never before, Holy Spirit, in my prayer life right now, amen? And we're going to talk, this is what God's calling us now because we're seeing stuff happening in our nation, in our world that we never thought could ever happen before. 
Amen. It's beyond, it's confusing like never before. And we're at the point, I don't want to pray about this stuff, Lord. It's so crazy. I never, so Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Amen. And sometimes you come upon you, you, you pray it out in English because the Bible says you, pray, you can pray, in, pray, with the, pray with your understanding and pray with praying in tongues at, at the same time. Because sometimes you pray, you understand, you feel the Holy Spirit on you praying in, in, in English, but they can come upon you and pray in another language. Like, man, it's the Holy Spirit taking over. And he's like, man, I know, I know your heart and I know how to pray this thing exactly to the Father. Amen. And he's praying and you pray it out mysteries, the Bible says. That's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That's, that was the main purpose why God sent the gift of tongues. That's what it's for. Amen. And people, they took it out of the context, but this, this is what, this is why I should ask for that. Amen? For your prayer life. Make sense, everybody, y'all? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many, how many want to go to the next level in your life? I said, how many want to go to the next level in your life? Amen? Amen. This is what I'm talking about. God wants to take you to the next level in your life right now because things are getting bad. And God said, I don't care how bad it is, I can cause you to be blessed in the midst of your enemies. Amen. And this is why the Holy Spirit is in your life. And I'm talking about these things so that you begin to see these things. Well, what do you do? Well, the thing is you have to begin to have a desire for those things. How do I get that, those manifested? First of all, you have to have a hunger and thirst for it. If you don't hunger and thirst for righteousness, you won't be filled with it, amen? So why, why I'm talking about these things to get you to see what you have, and now you say, Lord, I want, I want these things in my life. I, want, I have a hunger for these things. I want these things in my life, and as you draw near to God, guess what happened? All of a sudden, they start operating in your life, amen? And you begin to believe for them, amen? And you pray, in the Bible says, you seek me in prayer, then all of a sudden, then what? Then the Holy Spirit, all those gifts and manifestations begin to activate in your life. But if you don't hunger for them, if you're not thirsty for them, Amen. You don't cry, Lord, I want these, these things in my life. Amen. You, he'll be there dormant in your life and you walk around in your own flesh and your own weaknesses. Amen. That's why I'm teaching these things right now. Amen. So you, as you see these things now, okay, God, I see what's on the inside of me, Lord. I'm hungry. I want these manifestations. I want the word of wisdom, God. I want the word of knowledge. I want the healing word of miracles and gifts of healing, discerning the spirits. Amen. I want these because the Bible said covet these gifts, earnestly desire these gifts in your life because they're given to you what? To profit for your life and to help prosper other people's lives. Amen? Because what? The kingdom of God is in you. Amen? In power and in glory. Amen? He called you to do it in your own strength. Not by, come on, not by might. Come on. Not by power, but what? By my spirit. Amen? And these are the manifestations he wants to manifest in your life, in you, and through you. Amen? Same way he did it through Christ, he wants to do it to you or through you. The works that I do, come on, so you do also in greater works. What? Well, we can't do great. Well, it's not you doing the works. It's the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ in you continuing those works. Amen? How many hungry for those things? Amen? Because God said this in you, but now you get hungry for it. Now you're just like, okay, if I was you, I would take 1 Corinthians. I just read there, and I would go every day. I would take time and, and, and read it and say, Holy Spirit, go, go over each one of them. Holy Spirit, I want this activated in my life. You're inside of me. Your kingdom is in me. Amen? These, and this is where you're manifest. I want, I want to activate in the word of wisdom. I want that wisdom. I need wisdom, God. I need a word of knowledge about things I would never know by my own power. Amen. I want the gifts of healing. I might need healing for myself. I want to help somebody else, somebody sick. I want the gifts of healing. I lay hands on them, they get healed. Holy Spirit, amen. How many are, you got to have a hunger. You have to have a desire for these things. Amen. When you desire, it's something about a desire for the things of God. It draws God and activates the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you find yourself operating in wisdom like, where did, how'd you know that? They're coming, how'd you know that? Well, you give glory to God. The Holy Spirit gave me that wisdom. Amen. It's in you if you're born again. See, that's why we don't know what we have. We're not, we're not praying. Well, that's just for Jesus. We can never. No, no. He did it by the Holy Spirit. That's the same in you. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen? Glory. It's time to go to the next level, y'all. This is why I'm teaching this. This is why I had to get this out today. Amen? A lot of people didn't realize that you're born again, walking around like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No. You got a powerhouse on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. That's why I said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You can do all things through what? Come on. Through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? Hallelujah. But you can perish through what? Lack of knowledge of what you have. Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Glory to God. So how many going to get hungry for God now? Amen? How many going to start seeking these things? Amen? Because I'm telling you, you're going to need it as, this, as it gets darker and darker. You're going to get confused and fear can begin to hit you. And you're like, no, how am I, I going to do this stuff, God? Are you with me now? Hallelujah. So how do we get there? How do we get there? Let's, let's, let's close up here. First of all, you got to hunger and thirst for it. Two, you got to have faith for it. 
Three, you got to have fervent prayer. You got to you got to see God in fervent, heartfelt prayers. Amen. Amen. We're going to be doing. I said last week in John. Once a month on Fridays, uh, fasting and prayer. Uh, once a month, we, we pray every Wednesday with our Bible study. But we're going to do fasting all day, we're gonna, and we're going to pray from 7 to about 9 o'clock, two hours. Come just fast and pray. Because Jesus, that's it. there's certain demons that, that won't, can only come out through what? Through fasting and prayer. These demons, are always, they're strong now, y'all. And some things in your life aren't, aren't be moving because you aren't, you aren't coming together. You're not fasting and praying. And as you begin to fast and pray, amen, that's when things begin to change in your life, Amen. So we're going to start doing this, amen, because as you seek first what? Seek first the kingdom. That means you've got to seek it. You've got to pray, amen? Hallelujah. So why does God want us to, um, you know, why am I doing this series? Amen? Like we're living in times of great, like I said, the devil's doing crazy stuff now. He's stealing. He's killing. He's destroying. He's deceiving people, lying. I mean, lies everywhere. I mean, you can't believe almost anything you hear now, and even on, on news and everything else. Everybody got a slant to everything. You better hear the, from the Holy Spirit, amen? And he's got people so many bondages, so, and, and they can't get free. And so and there's a kingdom of darkness that's, that's beating people, and what's happening, and we're, the, we're called to be sought in the light of the world. Are you with me now? We're called the kingdom of light. And, we, and so God said, I need something to, I need you here, you, my people who have the kingdom in you, to get the light and the glory shining, amen, to what? To stop these works of darkness, to destroy these works of darkness, and what? Get people free from this bondage. Amen? So we don't activate these things in the kingdom. What? We walk around with the king and the kingdom in us. We have the power to help them, but we're all about our own selves. Amen? And we're not, act, we're not seeking first the manifestation of the kingdom and to operate in the kingdom. We've got to stand before God one day. What did you do with that kingdom I gave you? What did you do with that power and the word I gave you? What did you do? Did you waste it on yourself? Or are you, about, or you, what? Are you trying to do the will of God? And this is what God's going to call us into light, every one of us. Amen? We're called not just to be to help bless us up. We're called to bless other people, amen, to help those who are in darkness, snatch them out of the fire, out of, out of darkness, help bring them into light what, by these manifestations of the Holy Spirit, amen, to help other people, amen? Hallelujah. So seek first what? The kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness and all these things what? Will be what? Will be added unto you. God wants us to walk in the fullness of the kingdom, amen? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On earth, as it is in heaven. Amen. This help on you so far. Hallelujah. You see, we're the light of the world, right? We're the salt of the earth. What, what does salt do, y'all? Back in those days, they didn't have refrigerators, salt wood. They would put salt to keep meat from rotting real fast. And what God is saying is that all this stuff we're seeing is perversions getting rotting, filth. God said the more we operate in the kingdom, we can, we can help preserve things. Amen. But it said salt, if it lost its saltiness, what? It, it, or you can't season anything, it gets good for nothing but to throw it out because it lost its ability to season it. Amen? In light, you don't put light on the bushel, you put light on what? Out there so it can shine. Amen? He said, let your light so shine. Come on, be, what? Before men, what? They may see what? Come on, your good works. What kind of works? The works that Jesus did. Same works. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit I just went over. See your good works and what? And they, as they see them, they will what? Glorify, come on, your Father which is heaven. They'll know that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto them. Amen. They, they'll know that uh, can't, something from another realm has come. There's, uh, there's a peace I've never seen flowing out of you, a joy flowing out of you, a righteousness, a love flowing out of you. Amen. Power flowing out of you. But what is it that you have? Because we're manifesting the kingdom of God on the earth. We're called to manifest the kingdom of thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. And every one of us are called to do this. Amen. To do the works of Christ and to represent Jesus, to be his witnesses that he is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pray for the presence of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many want to come to that level in your life? Let me close with this here. Whew. Hallelujah. Here's what it says in Matthew 11, verse 12. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault, and violent men seize it by force as a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is taught for with most ardent zeal and what an intense exertion. Amen. There's a clash. There's a clash between two kingdoms down here, y'all. There's a clash. And the devil is going to fight against your mind like never before. Try to get you caught up in all kinds of stuff so you don't realize you don't, op, you don't activate the kingdom that's, that's in you. Get you sidetracked with this here. Sidetracked pleasure of this life, lots of other things. And you're over here and he's doing, he has nobody to stop him 
Because what? We're not activating the kingdom. Amen? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen? And that's what he does. He uses stuff to keep you just in check so he can just do what he wants and there's nobody to stop him. Amen? So, but it says it's soft for most, it's, you attack you violently, but the violent, the forceful, you take it by four. You're like, no, devil, you ain't going to stop me. No, it ain't. I bind you. Amen? I refuse to be moved. Amen? Uh, amen? And you're going to, you, I'm going to press against the pressure. Amen? I'm going to press into the kingdom of God. Amen? It's soft with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. Amen? So that's why it's like a fight. Why is it like a fight to get the things of God? God's not holding back from you. It's the devil that's fighting you. He's trying to resist you. Amen? But God says through the help of the Holy Spirit, you press into God. Amen? Amen? And then God, what? All of a sudden you get a breakthrough. Amen? And all of a sudden you lay hold to it. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold to eternal life. Amen? So in other words, you got to seek it with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. Amen. And as you seek it like that, guess what? You're going to find it. And all these manifestations will begin to manifest in your life. And you begin to find yourself operating in a new realm. You'll be doing the same works that Jesus did. Amen. And the power of God, and you'll be seeing many people begin to come into Christ. Your, your, your life will affect other people's lives through the kingdom of God. Did this help you all today? Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Seek first. Make the seek in the kingdom your top priority over everything. I said over everything. But God, I, I got this. I need this here. I need money. I need this here. I got God said, Jesus said, your, your heavenly father knows you have need of all these things. That, he said, all the rest all the world seeks after. These are temporary things. Amen. God wants you to have them. They're going to rust after a while and be moth eaten. He said, but you seek the kingdom first in my right way of doing things. And I add this stuff to you. And what you're doing, you're laying out treasure in heaven. So when you stand before God, you brought, you brought many souls into the kingdom. You're going to have eternal, eternal blessings, amen, throughout all the eternity because what you sought the kingdom first, the things that were most important in life, amen, because you don't know your life is like a vapor. It appears for a little while, and it goes away. I got the other news the other day, um, cause the cousin of ours, you know, um, this 21 years old. How old, 21? 23? 21, 20, got hit by a car. He just died. You know, but that's how quick you can leave out of here. You got to make seeking eternal things first place in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. We just worship you. We seek first your kingdom, God, and your righteousness, God. We come before you today, God. We come before your presence right now, God. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you right now. Oh, hallelujah. We just worship you right now. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. How many are hungry for the Lord right now? How many are hungry for more of God in your life right now? Let's take some time right now. Just pray. I want you to pray. This, this is a serious time. Father, we come before you right now, God. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land, God. We're, we're in trouble, God. I don't think we realize how bad things are, God. It is so bad that we don't, and the devil is disguising things and, and masquerading, and, and we're saying this uh, peace and safety, this sudden destruction will hit because he's, he's setting things up for destruction. But we need discerning of the spirit to what's really happening, God. So give us discerning of what's really going on in the world, God. Give us, help us to see behind all the, the, the my, my, all this, my, my, the stuff that looks good. Help us to see the real deal, God. And then begin to let us begin to give us a heart fervent to pray, begin to pray here to see, God, that your will will be done on the earth in this situation, especially our young people and our children and our teenagers, God, who are being attacked like never before in their minds, God, in my, my perverted ways, God. And we, my, my, so we pray, God, you begin to raise, my, my, you say, who, who, who you say, who, who shall I send? Who will go for us? You ask Isaiah, who will go for us? He's still asking the same question. Who can I send? Who can I use? Who's willing to, to work for me? Who's willing to lay down their lives for my sake in the Gospels? Who's willing to lose their life for my sake so they can gain it, the true life that I have for them? Hallelujah. And Isaiah volunteered, Lord, here am I, Lord. Here, here am I. Send me. Use me, God. It might be hard, but God, I, it, 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 it'll be worth it in the end, God. You said, Jesus said, there's no man that left ha having houses. We know we want houses, lands. We want lands and cars and all this stuff here. You know, my, my you know, wife, husband, all this other stuff, my sake in the Gospels. In other words, put that first. We will not receive back a hundredfold all these things in this lifetime plus eternal life. We got to put first things first, y'all. 
Things are falling apart. And God said, I need my people to rise up now who's called by my name now. I need my people to, my mind to begin to fervently pray and seek my face. Glory to God. Oh, glory, make seeking the kingdom a priority, not their kingdom. My mind, that's why your kingdom is falling kingdom apart, not because- mine first. Ha, ha, my, my, my God said, so when you seek my kingdom first, glory to God, then the wisdom of the Holy Spirit will come unto you, give you wisdom beyond your years, my, give you favor beyond your years. All of a sudden, you'll be, my, my people will come to you because what? You're putting my kingdom, and all of a sudden, the manifestation of knowledge and wisdom, my, 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 will begin to flow through you, glory to God. And you'll be the head and not the tail above and not beneath, glory to God. But I need you to put me first, God is saying. Hallelujah. And things will turn around for your good. All things will begin to work together for your good. And when things will turn around for your good in life, it work because God will work it for you. He'll work it for you. So, Lord, we thank you right now. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. I pray for everybody here. I pray that the fire of God will fall upon us right now in a new way, every one of us right now. The fire of your presence will fall upon us right now. Everybody here. Let the fire, the same fire we read about in the book of Acts says the Holy Ghost and the fire fell. I pray the fire will fall on everybody right now. I pray you give them a revelation of who you are like never before. Revelation of who they are in you like never before. Revelation of what, you're, what they're called to do and become like never before, Father God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God. And give them a zeal for the things of God like never before. A desire to want to know you, to do your will, to find out my mind. In the name, and I pray you fill them, baptize them, overflow them in the power of the Holy Ghost, God. Immerse them in your power, in your strength, in your ability, God. Transform their lives. And we thank you for right now. We give give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor right now in the name that's above every name the name of Jesus we bless you for God we praise you we honor you for God in Jesus name amen let's give him praise let's give him glory let's give him honor today hallelujah you may be seated glory to God